Smart Monks and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. This is my little platform where I turn struggling math students into math masters. And I post videos weekly, so turn on the notification button and subscribe to the channel if you want to know when I post a new video. It really helps my channel. Um, so in this video, grade 10, I'm going to be showing you uh, how to find the position on a number line that is third, actually an irrational third. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? So essentially they will ask you, okay, so find between which two integers this specific third value falls without using a calculator. So the way you would do it, I will show you in this video and the steps. And at the end, I have a little um, exercise for you to try. And yeah, hopefully by the end of this video, you will fully understand how to do that. Okay, so also, if you want to have any extra exercises, please have a look at the link in the description below, and I will show you where you can find um, exercises that you can actually practice this work to make sure that you actually understand it that come with a memo. And um, if that link is not in the description just yet, please just give me a chance. You can uh, stay up to date with the affairs of this platform that I'm busy building in the YouTube community page. I will then let you know when those worksheets and that platform will be ready. Okay, so let's jump into the video. All right, so great tens, welcome to this video on numbers, specifically looking at irrational numbers between integers. Okay, so before we start and I explain to you what we're going to be doing in this video and explain to you how to do it, I want to make sure that you understand what an irrational number is, right? So an irrational number is essentially a number that cannot be written as a fraction and that the decimal values have no pattern and no ending, right? So that's an irrational number. So for example, if we look at pi, pi is 3.14159265.4 and it continues onwards. It's an irrational number, okay? Then we have the square root of 2, which is 1.4142, etc. Again, no pattern, no ending, therefore it is an irrational number, okay? So when we're looking at irrational numbers, we're looking at this. But now, we also need to understand that thirds are values that have a root like this, okay? And it's important for you to note this because sometimes they'll refer to the, an irrational number as square root of 2, instead of giving it to you as 1.4142, etc. So if they give it to you in the form of square root of 2, we call this the third form. Okay? And we're going to need to understand the third form in able to do the calculations that is required for what I'm going to teach in this video. So let's look. So the question would be, between which two integers does an irrational number lie? Okay? An uh, irrational number that's given in third form. So let's look at the first question. So a question in a test or an exam situation could look as follows. It says, between which two numbers does the square of 50 lie? So the way you would approach this question, now this question could be done on the calculator. However, when being asked questions like this in an exam, they will tell you to do it without a calculator. Because essentially what you need to do is you need to find out what is the number on either side of the square root of 50 and show your calculations and how you got that. So... I'm going to show you how to do it, and then you can just use your calculator to check. So between which two numbers does the square root of 50 lie? Now, like I said, square root of 50 is in third form, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to look, you're going to start by first looking at what is a perfect square that is closest to 50 on either side of the number line, okay? So let's look. If we look at all the perfect squares, we have, you know, you can just write them down like this, and we see which one is on either side of 50. So if you look here, you have 49 and 64. So 49 is on the left side of 50 on a number line and 64 is on the right side of 50 on a number line. Okay, so what you would then do here is you would then find the square root of both of these. So if 49 is on the left, 64 is on the right, then you would add your less than signs in between and then you would actually find what is the square root of these perfect squares. So it's the square root of 49 is 7 and the square root of 64 is 8. So we have now discovered that the square root of 50, which you can check on your calculator, uh, falls between 7 and 8. So you've answered the question 
because between which two numbers does the square root of 50 lie? They lie between 7 and 8. Okay, and that's how you would approach this question. Let's do another one. Between which two numbers does negative square root of 50 lie? So the way you would approach a negative value is exactly the same as you would approach the positive. The only difference is towards the end. So again, we now, this is the same like the previous example. So we have it between the same two values, but watch this. So this is what we got in the previous example when we had 50, which was positive, right? But now what we're going to do is we're going to change this to negative. And whenever we're working with inequalities or we're working with um, less than and greater than signs, whenever we are dividing by a negative, we change the direction of those signs. So if you have a look here, so here what we're doing, you'll see that we've changed everything to negative, And so therefore we've changed all the signs. So what then happens is that the square root of that is still negative 7 and the square root of that is negative 8. We normally put the smaller number on the left and the greater number on the right. So we'll just put the negative 8 there, put the negative 7 there. But now remember, the open part of this was from between negative 8 and 50 was showing towards the 50. So the open part here has to show towards the negative 50 as well. Okay, and that's essentially how you would apply a negative uh, uh, question. So again, the first three steps are the same, but the only difference is when we start coming towards, when we divide by the negative, the direction of the inequalities change. And then at the end, we make sure that we swap it so that the smaller value is on the left and um, the small list value is on the left and the bigger value is on the right. Okay, so that's fairly simple. So with me having shown you how to do that now, I would like you to try this exercise on your own. So I want you to write this down and I want you to figure out without using the calculator between which two numbers these thirds lie. A few minutes later. Okay, so let's see how you did. Um, so for the first one, your answer should have been between 4 and 5 because you got square root of 16 and square root of 25 on either side. For number 2, you would have gotten between negative 10 and negative 9. And then the third question, I added one with cubes, and I wanted to show you that you would use the same cube values. That is on, so you'd look for the cube values that's on the left and the right of 136, and it would give you 125 and 216, which means that these values fall between 5 and 6. All right, and that's how you work out where SIDS, irrational SIDS, how between which two values on a number line that third actually lies. All right, so that's the end of this video. All right, great tens, there's that video. Hopefully you found it helpful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or, you know, any recommendations for future videos, please let me know and I will make sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Yeah, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thank you so much for watching the video up until here. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.